Welcome to our monthly virtual lecture. As a reminder, this lecture is being recorded and will be available on the, our YouTube channel in the coming days. My name is Christopher Davis, and I'm pleased to announce our, uh, our speaker today, Valerie Lafleche. Valerie is the Director of Data Management and Geotechnical Projects uh, here at Mira. Today, she'll be introducing us to Geoscience Integrator and showing us how to connect to it with Geoscience Analyst. She'll be using public data repository from the NSERC CMIC Footprints Research Project. If you do not have Geoscience Analyst, you can download the latest version from our website, mirrorgeoscience.com. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in the Q&A or raise your hand. Please be aware that Valerie may wait till the end to answer the question. Val, the floor is yours. Thanks, Chris. And hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I'll begin the lecture by showing you a couple of images to quickly introduce Geoscience Integrator, the data management system where the NSERC CMIC footprints research data resides. Um, then I'll give you a demo on how to import some of the data sets in Geoscience Analyst, as Chris mentioned. I just want to ensure for first that, that you know where the data is and how it is organized before we jump to the demo. So Geoscience Integrator is a general 4D multidisciplinary data management system for mining and geology information. It allows data to be integrated into a single secure repository shared by all team members for um, retrieval, analysis, and decision-making purposes. It brings together structured and unstructured geoscience data. So by structured data, I mean data values as records in a database, like geochem values for core samples. And when I talk about unstructured data, I mean files and metadata, files any, of any format like lab certificates, core photos, reports, or geology interpretation. So Geoscience Integrator brings together structured and unstructured data from drill core, uh, drill hole data to all types of geology, geophysical, geochemical, and geotechnical data, interpretations, and models. As you will see, documents and files can be stored, managed, and linked to data as well. As a true 4D data management system, it handles spatial and temporal data. It also has 4D query capability. I mean, by this that we can search and filter data in space and time. Metadata, tagging, charting, reporting, and internal advanced spatial computations are also supported. The data resides on a central server and can be accessed by two different user interfaces, a web browser and geoscience analyst for 3D visualization. The data we'll be looking at today is hosted on a server located at a snow lab in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. We're going to look, look at a few uh, 3D data sets using Geoscience Analyst as our user interface. I will not have time today to demo data access via the web browser. Now I want to rapidly explain how Geoscience Integrator uses a hierarchy of containers to organize data. There are three main levels of data organization. The highest level is the project. All data inside a project should have consistent units and coordinate system so that different data sets can be compared numer numerically and spatially. Projects typ typically represent mine sites or exploration projects. In the case of the NSERC CMIT footprints research data, we have three projects the Canadian Malartic Disseminated Gold Project, the Highland Valley Porphyry Copper Project, and the MacArthur River Millennium Uranium Project. Themes are the second level of data organization. Themes are preset containers with familiar names to group data of similar type. Data sets are the lowest level of data organization. A data set is a customized container to group data inside a theme. Data sets can contain files, maps, sections, data records and tables, and metadata. Data set definitions are flexible and are meant to correspond to how users view data. 
Now let's start Geoscience Analyst and have a look at some of these data sets. We log into the Geoscience Integrator from Geoscience Analyst using a username and password. Then we select the project we want to look at. For today's demonstration, I'm going to select the Highland Valley Porphyry Copper Project. Now I invite you to watch the panel on the left-hand side. As I click load and click, the object tree on the left will populate with the list of themes for which we have data sets in the project. Geoscience Analyst has not requested any actual data from the server, okay? only metadata describing the project at this point. Data is only brought from the server as requested. So you can have very, very large projects on your server, but only retrieve the data you want to visualize in Geoscience Analyst when you need it. If we expand some of the themes folders here, we see the data sets. And as we scroll down under the viewport, we see lists of files, maps, plans, and sections, and documents for the project. You can easily search for files by typing text strings. I type mag. I see they have one file, one map plan or section, and a few documents that contain mag and their name or file type. If I'm more interested in geochemistry, I type geochem, I see that I also have a bunch of files. If I'm interested in one of them, well, I can easily open it. If the file is importable in Geoscience Analyst, you'll be given the option to import it. Otherwise, as in this case, the default application sets on your computer will be used depending on the file format. Okay, now let's bring some 3D data in our viewport and let's start with some geological context. So if I navigate in the left-hand panel to the topography theme, I see that I have one data set also named topography. The gray font indicates that this data set is composed of files. It does not contain any structured data in the database, but that doesn't mean I can't access it. If I click on the data set name, topography, I have the data set summary appearing here at the bottom panel, containing various information on the data set. In this case, we don't have that much information, but we see that we have two wireframes, two different versions of the topo surface. In the viewport, we have a box uh, displaying the extent of the data of this data set. So let's import our topo. This time, I was giving an import option. Okay, import means that Geoscience Analyst will attempt to import the file using one of its import filters. The data now exists in my Geoscience Analyst workspace. And in this case, for the surface, I can color it by elevation. Now let's bring the structural model the same way. I'm going to navigate to Earth Models to the 3D Structural Surface theme and click on the fault network data set. Again, I have a box showing me the extent of data set, and I have the data set summary at the bottom. I can import any file I want. Once the file is imported, as in this case, I could color it by, um, by fault name, by deformation, I can show and hide uh, any classes I want, etc. All the visual parameters and the regular functionality of Geoscience Analyst are, are available to me to visualize all the data. Now let's have a look at some ground geophysics. So I navigate to the ground geophysics theme 
And we see that we have five data sets, two of which are maintained in Geoscience Integrator as files, as you see for the gray font, and three of them contain uh, structured data. So let's import one of each. I'm going to start by selecting the NRCAN Gravity Station data set. As I do so, again, I have my data set extent and my data set summary at the bottom. On the top right of the UI, we now see a geoscience integrator query panel. This query panel adapts to the data set that's highlighted in the object tree on the left-hand side. I can use any of these filters, which vary from one thing to another, to import my data. In the present case, I want to import the entire data set. So I'm going to leave the settings all to their defaults and just click on Run. And now I have my data set available for me to use. Okay. Now let's import a data set that's composed of files. I'm going to click on the NRCAN Gravity 2 Kilometer Grid data set and import. So again, as I click on a data set, I always see its extent displayed in the viewport and its summary at the bottom. Note um, that even though this data set was stored as a file, and must be imported as a file, it appears as a normal object with its data in the table at the bottom here. While we're here, why don't we quickly also import a um, 2D litter probe interpretation, um, a georeferenced image. So I'm just going to hide this grid, click on my 2D litter probe interpretation data set, and choose a file that's available through its uh, data set summary. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to now hide my topo and our geophysics and we're going to go look at some geochemistry data. So as I select the geochemistry and mineralogy theme, I see a list of data sets, all of them composed of structured data. So I'm going to select the whole rock geochemistry data set. Again, I have my extent and my summary at the bottom. So in the summary, I can see I have over a thousand sample in this data set, various information, and I see files. So although this data set is composed of structured data, it can also have files associated to it. In this case, we have sample photos, uh, data set documentation, um, and some lab certificates. I keep on scrolling down. I have more information. I have basic statistics on the properties measured on these samples and some additional data set at the bottom. Now this time I want to import some data, but instead of importing the entire data set, I want to just import the data that's in this top right corner. Okay. So what I'm going to do is look from the top and draw a box using my mouse, so which is an X and a Y extent, just here, and say, OK, integrator, only send me the samples of this data set that belong in this box. And there we go. Okay. I could have made a more specific um, filtering or query if I wanted to by adding additional um, filters. For example, in this case, I could have said, well, only send me the samples that fit in, the, in this box and that have, um, let's say, gold value in PPB greater than 100, okay? and so on. We can always uh, add more filtering to make our, our research um, more specific. Uh, the final thing I would like to show you today is about data set search. So this time we're not looking for data within a known data set. We're looking for data sets. 
Um, so this feature is very, very useful when, when you're not very familiar with a project. We can search for data sets using names, descriptions, extents in space, or metadata. So let's try one by, and I'm going to type mag here and click find. So the data sets that have the text string mag in their name are highlighted on the left-hand side panel in the object tree. Their extent is displayed in the viewport as well as their names. Okay. So finally, let me clear this search and do a final one. This time I want to search for any data sets that in is intersect a, a 3D box, a volume of space. Let me show you this bounding box here. This represents the entire extent of the project. Now let's uh, pretend that we're interested in this area in the center where we have our, um, our fault network. So I'm going to look at the project from the top and just quickly use my mouse here to create a smaller box and press find. So all the data sets that either intersect my red box or that are contained within it are highlighted in the object tree. Their extent is displayed in the, as well as their name in the viewport. Now let me zoom in here to show you a final picture. Let's say you're interested by these data set and you go down the list in the object tree and you find one of particular interest, maybe the geological contacts here. You click on the data set name. Its box is displayed in a different color in the viewport. And its data set summary is also made available to you at the bottom. So you can now investigate the data sets of your choice and import their data and their files. Okay, again, this is extremely useful tool uh, when you're not familiar with a project or you're familiar with a project, but you're not sure all the data sets you have for an area, uh, just draw a box and, and ask to see the data. So this is all the time I had to show you today. Um, but once, once you understand how to search for data sets and filter and import structured data, bring in files, the mechanics are the same for, for any uh, type of data set. Uh, people registered to attend to the lecture will receive a notification when the server and its data are made available to the public. And you will then have access to both user interfaces to explore the data sets of all three of the NSERC CMIC footprint projects. Now, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Wow. Thanks, Val. That was really cool. There are many Thank things you. I cannot manage, but data is now on the list of things I can. <laughs> Wonderful. So, thanks again, and thanks everyone to join us. For those of you who are in the lecture, we'll give you about half a minute to type out any questions uh, you may have. If you have any questions in the future, please do not hesitate to email us at support at mirageoscience.com. We look forward to seeing you next month when we invert geophysical data to find depth of basement using Geoscience Analyst Pro Geophysics. <laughs>